making a Stuart model steam plant. Part 12. Another Stuart S50 steam engine arrives. It's a good one and this will be used for driving the PM Research generator. But first I need to set the valve timing. Here it is, yet another S50. And it's quite well made, it's slightly better than the others. Although I do notice that it has packing washers under the slide valve support guides. I think I'll make some more of these spacers that are actually the correct size. In this clip, using my general lubricating oil, I'm giving the engine a thorough coat of oil on all the moving parts. And before running the engine, I squirt some steam oil into the steam chest. All the oils I currently use are buy from a company called Hallett Oil. It's very good stuff and I've put their website address on screen. Here is a first test run. The popping noise that you've just heard was the sound that the slide valve made when it hit the port face once I supplied sufficient air pressure to the steam chest. It seems to run OK, but as usual, the valve timing is not right. But you can't have everything. The crankshaft isn't bent and the run out of the flywheel is at an absolute minimum. Let's have a look at the valve timing, as I've mentioned many, many times in quite a lot of videos. Early admission at each end of the stroke of the air or steam is very important. If the admission is late, then the engine knocks. If the engine is too advanced, then it's very lumpy. But when you get it perfectly right, every reciprocating part is cushioned at each end of the stroke, which means less mechanical noise and more efficiency. Setting the valve timing really is an easy job. The first thing to do is to connect some compressed air to the engine, not a lot, just enough so you can hear the hiss as you turn the engine over top dead centre. I'm pleased to say that the valve is in the correct position relative to the valve rod. I do not need to move the position of the valve in the valve chest. All I need to do is advance the eccentric. What I'm doing at the moment though is retarding the eccentric which makes things worse. The admission becomes very late, and the engine runs OK, but it's not the way to do it. Admitting the steam or air as the piston is on its way back down the cylinder is not the best idea. Now I know that the timing is retarded, I start to advance it in very small increments. You can feel when the piston wants to move, and here the valve opening is still very late. Each time you see me adjusting the grub screw on the eccentric sheave, I'm rotating the eccentric sheave to advance the admission of the steam or air. I'm purposely being pedantic with this because don't forget it's a tutorial for beginners. And so many times I have steam engines on the bench that need repairs or adjustment and nearly always the valve timing is not set correctly. But when it is, it's much better. I rest my case, the difference is obvious. The timing on this engine is now set to perfection and it runs very well indeed. I've put it in the steam plant mock-up and now I need to test whether the generator works. Please note in the finished steam plant I will be using a leather belt to drive the generator, not an elastic band, which has just flown off anyway. These are the types of elastic band that are used for wing bands on vintage model aircraft. What I need to do now is screw the engine and the generator down to a board. I screw the generator down initially just with one wood screw. Once the generator was in a position that allowed the elastic band to be in the centre of the flywheel of the engine, I fitted another wood screw to hold the generator down onto the piece of scrap wood. This is quite a large elastic band and it's doing the job very well. What I need to know now is, is the generator generating, and if so, how many volts? In this clip, I'm giving the second wood screw a final tighten to make sure the generator can't move. Time to connect my old test meter set to DC volts in a 25 volt range. I've increased the speed of the engine and it's generating 15 volts, but that's under no load, just the meter reading. Time now to look at a realistic test. I'm going to put a load across the terminals of the generator. I'm going to use a spare bulb 
of the type that fit around my traction engine's canopy. It's a 12 volt, 5 watt bulb. All I need to do now is connect this bulb to the generator's terminals very crudely using a screwdriver. You can hear that the sound of the engine has changed because now it is driving. With the load connected, the generator is harder to turn. This is the way of things. I almost forgot to show you this. Another box of parts also arrived. More pressure gauges and PM research piping, gas valves, all sorts of things in a box. I've never seen or used pressure gauges of this type, but I'm sure they'll be fine. I think most of these parts are from a company in the USA called PM Research. In this collection of bits and pieces are a couple of very fine copper tubes soldered to cylinder drain valves. As far as I understand, the customer wants me to send back the yellow and black engine with these connected to it, which I'm going to do. I need to speak to him using FaceTime or a similar medium so I can ask him exactly what he wants. Also in this package was a very large street lamp. I don't think there's a place for this on the plant at all. You can hear the tone change very clearly when I apply the load and then disconnect the load. So I think a bulb of this sort of wattage will probably be okay. I could use LED bulbs, but I'd rather not because they're definitely not part of the steam age. If you put too high wattage a bulb on the generator, then it won't be successful. It will take too much effort to turn it and it will overload it. To finish, here's a bit of slow motion. The engine will have to go a lot faster than this, but as you can see, the generator is quite happy generating electricity. And that concludes this video. I'd like to say, as I always do, please stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.